Ping. I'm Susanna Kay, and welcome to an overview video about the Rocket Book. Now, I got my first Rocket Book over three years ago, and I shot my first Rocket Book video about it in September of 2017. And this is that very same Rocket Book. I've been using it on almost a daily basis for the past three years. I've stuck stickers to it, all sorts of tabs and everything. So I've absolutely loved my Rocket Book. So I wanted to give you a quick overview of what the Rocket Book is, how to write in it, and what types of pens to use, how to erase it, how you can scan with it, and a couple of tips about if you are going to use some flags and some just good general things to know. So like I mentioned, I've been using my Rocket Book for over three years with this one. I have several other styles of Rocket Books as well, but this is the core, which at the time was called Everlast because I got it off of Kickstarter when they were brand new, I believe. Um, and this is basically, it's just general blank pages. Now, what makes the Rocket Book different from a regular notebook? First off, it's reusable. So you can write on the pages and then use a damp cloth to wipe off your writing and use the page all over again. Second, the Rocket Book has their own app. And with the app, you can scan the pages really easily and send them to your email, to messages, to some cloud services. They've got a long list of places that you can send it, like Google Drive, Dropbox, Evernote, Trello, Slack, so many different places. And the way that they do this is there are QR codes at the bottom of each page, and that tells Rocketbook, I'm guessing, that this is your notebook, so it can tell which account this is linked to, um, or which notebook it is, possibly. But this QR code goes along with these little icons that are at the bottom. And you can see the larger picture of the icons over here. Now the icons, you can set various destinations within the app for each icon. So within the app, I already have several destinations that I have set. I like to use Google Drive and my email and sometimes Dropbox. But when I do a scan, I've already set which folder within my Google Drive or my Dropbox or which email address I want it to send to. So when I'm using my Rocket Book, after I've written on my page, then I can just put an X over the icon that goes with whatever destination I've already preset. So for example, if the diamond icon was set to my main folder for my Google Drive, then when I scan this page with the app, then it will automatically send it to the main folder in my Google Drive. I could also have it send to my email address if I were to uh, do a check mark on a different page. So that's what makes the Rocket Book different from a lot of the normal notebooks. It's super easy to send all of your ideas and your notes right into the cloud or through email to somebody else. And hey, it's saved so much paper. I'm a paper person. I love, love, love to write notes, but that's a lot of paper that I was just having to put in the recycle bin. So now if I don't want to scan it, that's okay. I can just wipe off the page and reuse the page and it saves the environment with people like me who like to take their notes. It's super helpful. So with the Rocket Book, here are a few things that you will need to know. The Rocket Book cannot be used with normal pens. It has a specific type of pen that you use and that is the Pilot Friction Pen. So the Pilot Friction Pen, this is the pen that it comes with when you order your Rocket Book. There are different types of Pilot Friction pens though, so you don't always need to use the one that came with the notebook. And there are various colors. There are some that click like this. There are some, I believe that they even have some markers. I don't have any markers, but there are highlighters. So you can use various colors. Not all of them will scan as well as the black. This is the one that is best for scanning, but I actually find that some of the darker colors, like my purple, my darker red, my navy blue, scan relatively well when I scan them. So you'll just need to test it and see if it scans well enough for what you want. But as long as it's a friction pen, F-R-I-X-I-O-N, then that's the type that you need it to be. Now, I will say if you get some of the super skinny friction pens like this one, this is one of those slim 0.38s. 
These don't show up very well. They're just way too thin to really show up. Or some of the lighter colors. Like it's a really pretty light coral, but on the scans, it does not show up well. So test these things out and see what works best for you. But if you're not scanning, then as long as it shows up on the rocket book and it's a friction, then you are all good. Now, when you write with the friction, the reason that these are so useful is because they are erased with the heat from, as it's labeled, friction. So when I write in my notebook, then since they are erasable with the friction, then I am able to, you can use the eraser if you would like, or the best way to erase is to grab a damp sponge or cloth and just wipe it down. And that's the easiest and best way. You can then, you can then dry it off with a paper towel or they include a nice soft cloth. I'll go into erasing more in a minute. But when you write in your rocket book, and let's turn to a blank page like most of the rocket books are. This is the fusion. So there are some templates on this version. But when you first write, oh, I wrote kind of sideways there. So it did not show up as well. And sometimes that'll happen with older pens or if you did not dry your page very well, or if you got something maybe sticky on your page, sometimes the ink won't show up very well, but that was probably my older pen. This is the one that I just got today. There we go, first time using it. But at first, if you touch it right away, then it will smear. Or if you were to draw something, write something, and then flip the page really quickly, then you will see that it will create that image on the other page. But once it dries, like this first one, you will see you can touch it without it smearing. It does not take very long to dry. This heart is already dry. So as long as you let it dry for, you know, about five or 10 seconds, it seems, that's enough with the friction pens for it to not smear. And once it's dry, you can touch it as much as you want. As long as your hands are dry, then it's not going anywhere. That's just a, a little bit of a smudge just because that was a thicker mark that I put on there. So those are the types of pens that you're able to use. You can use highlighters. I will say though with highlighters, you can't highlight over the writing as well, but it does work a little bit. You have to use the friction highlighters if you're going to. They might not scan as well either. So I rarely use a highlighter. If I do, it might just be to put something next to a word to make sure to, that it actually shows up. Highlighters also do take a lot longer to dry. So you're going to have to wait longer for that page to dry before you can flip to another page. But they can be useful as long as you use the friction highlighters, then it is completely up to you. Now, that's the pens. If you were to use something like a Sharpie on your uh, rocket book, I have done that. And this is kind of what it looks like. This is my old beat up page that I test things on. So you can see that it's kind of beaten up, but, but I have written in Sharpie before on my rocket book. And the nice thing with this is if you've written down with Sharpie, you can create a template. And then when you write on your rocket book with your friction pen and you go to erase it later that day, then the Sharpie will stay on and the friction pen will go away. So it's a great way to create sort of a template if you would like to. If there's something that you want to do over and over and over again, then it's a really useful way. Now, as far as erasing your rocket book, the main way to erase the rocket book is with a damp cloth. And they give you this cloth with the rocket book. I'm imagining that you can probably dampen it. I use it to dry because it's this nice soft cloth. And I just use an old sponge. <laughs> This one's been through the ringer because it's been used for my rocket book a million times, but it just needs to be moist, not soaking wet. You can use any type of regular cloth. And I also like to use a soft paper towel for that first dry. And then I use the soft cloth for kind of that finishing touch dry. The way this works, when you want to erase, you can just take your sponge and wipe down anything on the page. I like to then grab my paper towel and get off the main 
moisture. And then I usually use the cloth that came with it, which is nice and soft, to get off just that last little bit of moisture. So it's nice and ready to go. And I usually have to wait about maybe 10, 15 seconds for the page to be completely dry before I write on it again, or before I turn the page. So that way it does not get stuck in between the pages and it can actually dry. Now you can use the eraser that is on the pen if you want to. I will say though, with the erasers that, is, that are on the friction pen, these are not normal pencil erasers. So you cannot use a normal pencil eraser. That will just get your rocket book all sticky and leave a residue. But these are like a silicone and they create a heat from the friction, hence the name friction. So they create a heat that will erase for you. So once it's dry, then you can use the eraser on the pen to erase in your rocket book. Now, I usually like to rub my finger over it afterwards because it will leave kind of a little bit of a gummy residue and it does not write as smoothly each time afterwards if you've used the back eraser, but there are times that I do it anyways. And once you've wiped down your rocket book with your wet cloth, then you can't even tell that you ever use the eraser on it. So feel free to use the eraser on the pen. Just know that it's not going to work as well um, as the actual wet eraser. Now the friction pens can also be used on regular paper, just as an FYI. So I use these basically whenever I'm going to write anything and that way I can erase on the paper too. So the friction pens can also be used on regular paper. So I actually use my friction pens for just about everything that I write, at least like internal home notes, because that way I can erase them on the paper and you can't even tell that I erased anything, which is awesome because I make a lot of mistakes. It's amazing. <laughs> but with the friction pens, I will say your rocket book, as well as on regular paper, don't leave it in direct or higher heat because it will erase the ink. Since the friction heat is what erases the um, ink, then heat, if I leave my rocket book on the dashboard of my car in the summer, I live in Florida, then it heats up so much that it can make the ink disappear. Most of the time with most regular heat, like on the airplane, underneath the airplane seats, or there have been times where I sat on my rocket book <laughs> and sat there for a while before I realized it, any normal heat sources, as long as they're not super hot, they're not going to erase it. If you ever do accidentally leave it somewhere kind of hot and it erases, most of the time you can pop it in the fridge or even the freezer and in a minute it'll show the ink again. Um, it's very rare that you lose all the ink, but just be aware that like, I don't use friction pens for addressing envelopes in the mail or things like that. Cause I don't want the ink to disappear if it's not in my control. So the one other way to erase the wave version of the rocket book. Now this is only for the version called the wave. It will say wave on the front, I believe still but is with the microwave. Don't try this on any other version. So don't use the core, don't use the friction. None of those can go in the microwave, but the wave can. And you just pop it in the microwave according to the directions and it'll erase the entire notebook. Now, I don't do that because most of the time I don't want to erase all of my pages. I really just want to erase a few. But if you did want to use the wave, then that one you can use the microwave to erase the whole book at once, which is kind of handy. I think it's kind of cool. So that's erasing. Um, you can use the eraser on your friction pen. You can use a damp cloth, which is the best. And if you have the wave version, if you want to, you can also use the microwave. With the rocket book, most of the time, I don't want to erase the page right away. A lot of times either I've got an ongoing project or I'm just busy and I don't want to stop and pull out a moist cloth and erase it. So what I do, my little trick is once I'm done with it, whether it's either been scanned or if it's something I don't even want to scan, I just put a large X across the page so I know that I do not need what's on that page anymore. And then when I start to run out of pages and I'm ready for just a big erasing, like an erase-a-thon, then I can go through and any page that has an X, I know that I can just wipe clean and erase and start fresh which is super handy. And with my sponge, 
what I like to do, I use a sponge because that way I can put it in a little Ziploc bag and I keep this, it's just moist, like I said, not completely damp, not completely soaked. But then I keep, I keep my reusable sponge right in my desk. Or if I'm going on an airplane, going on a trip, I throw it in my backpack along with the drying cloth. And if I think that I'm gonna use a lot of erasing then with a piece of paper towel. And this way it's right with me whenever I need it. So I don't have to hop up and get a new moist cloth because that can be annoying. So those are just some tricks for erasing. Now, when you've taken a bunch of notes and you're ready to scan a page, it's super easy with the Rocketbook app. Once you open the Rocketbook app, you can just scan your page very quickly using your camera on your smartphone. And depending on what icon you've checked, that's where it'll send it. So this is how that works. Once you have your page written on, then you are ready to scan up to the app. If you use hashtags, two hashtags around the first line, it will use that to create your file name. So this way the file name would be scan test when I scan it. Also at the bottom of the page, those icons and those icons a little closer up look like this. Those icons are telling the app where to send your scan. So right now I have the rocket icon check marked, so you can see there. And it does work best if you have a black background around your page when you go to scan. It's not required because each page does have a black border, but it's much easier. So let me turn this sideways so that way you can see when you open the app, these are the destinations that I currently have saved within the app. So I use a lot of Google Drive, email, I sometimes use Dropbox, but it does have a number of other destinations available. So for example, you can go to Evernote, Dropbox, OneNote, OneDrive, Trello, Slack, Box, iCloud, email, or send it as a message. And you decide what each of these icons are set for. So right now I have this first icon with the rocket that I check marked on my page is set to go to my Google Drive in the video folder. So when I do a new scan, I can tap new scan. It's going to use my camera. You have Rocketbook and Beacons. You want to be on Rocketbook. Beacons are a totally separate thing and we'll talk about that another time. But let me see if I can get this in the frame. So you'll see that it uses the camera to take the picture. Then I'll hit next. Oops. Once you're finished, you can do multiple pages if you want to. Once you've scanned it, you will see within the app, it's called scan test. And that's because I had those hashtags of scan test. And then you can check everything before you send it. You can tap to see what it looks like. I can see that the little rocket is what it noticed was sent. So once I like everything, I can also rotate it. But once everything is how I want it to be, then I can just hit send and it's going to send to my Google Drive folder called video, which is super handy. And it's already got the file name for me. So you can see your history right here. So this one, you can see how I had multiple colors and even a pen. I used a pen that was starting to fade. So within the app, you can preview it and you can see that sometimes the light does not show up as well as the darker black. And when it starts to fade, it does not show up as well, but some of the color still shows up really well. So do some tests and see what you prefer. And you can always open up your app and send it to various locations that have not been sent. It'll already tell you that it's right now it's sent to Google photo. If I also wanted it to send to my to file folder and I could just click that and hit send and it'll send to that. So it's really nice to be able to use the app to quickly scan and send your information right to the cloud. And if you have a good, strong file name, it's easy to search for it as well.
So that is it for scanning. Okay, well, that's a general overview of how the Rocketbook works and how you can scan, you can write, you can erase everything that you need to go to get started with your Rocketbook. It's definitely one of my favorite tools for productivity and to reduce the amount of paper in my life. I will say that the pages don't feel exactly like paper, but they're actually a really nice satiny feel. And once you start using it for a while, you get used to it. At first, I was not too sure if I liked the feel of writing on it, but now I absolutely love it. So just give it a chance. There are a few things that I did want to point out, kind of a first level of your next step as you use your Rocketbook. First off, if you do use any type of flags, I like to use little post-it flags, anything that says removable index flags. These I got from the dollar store, so <laughs> that's all that those are. But as long as they're removable, they're great. They can help you find your place easily, especially if you use any templates. Like I have my agenda page that I use, that I created. And with my agenda page, I just have post-it tape along the edge. And that edge is like, I can write my day's plans right next to that agenda post-it strip. And what I used was the post-it notes tape. It looks like this. And anything that's like this, that's sticky, whether it's post-it tape or if it's a flag, when you put it on, you will need to rub off any sticky residue before you start to write on it or before you erase. And if you do leave a flag or post-it tape on for an extended period of time, it can leave a permanent mark. So I like the flags but I only use them if I plan to basically keep a flag on that page repeatedly or for a longer period of time. I do like to keep some of my other rocket books, not this main one that I use every day, a little bit cleaner, but it does not affect their performance at all. It just looks a little bit ugly after a while, but this is what it looks like. This is, this is my agenda page. So I had this flag, I put multiple flags on it, and it's been on there for probably three years. So it's definitely done some damage, but a number of other pages you can see I've had, you know, I use flags constantly with it and there's not necessarily any damage to the sides of the pages. It's only when you do it repeatedly for a long time, but also with the post-it tape, this leaves even more of a residue. So whenever you remove something like this, first off, don't leave post-it tape on for very long unless you, actually want to keep it on forever or for a very long time or replace it with new post-it tape because it definitely can leave some like residue. It's got more sticky than the post-it flags do. But after I remove it, if it's there for just a short time, I just rub my fingers over it to get kind of any of the sticker boogers <laughs> off of the page. And then it's absolutely fine after that. You can't even tell that it was there. So that's just kind of one of those Words of warning, uh, be careful with the residue. Don't write it on write on it with any pens that are not the friction pens unless you want it to possibly be permanent and possibly ruin your book. Uh, you can't rub any of the writing off once it's on unless your hands are like damp or wet or you spill water on it, which I've done that with my coffee before. Not the end of the world, but did not help the look of things, but my coffee did wipe off surprisingly well. You can't tell that I ever spilled coffee on it, which is good. So use your rocket book wisely. Feel free though, beat it up. I've beat this thing up for over three years. It's still kicking. It still does amazing work for me and I absolutely love it. I hope that you love your rocket book too. Tell me in the comments if you have a rocket book and if so, what you think of it, or if you haven't used it yet, are you excited to? And also check out my other videos. I have a ton of videos about my hacks that I've done on my rocket books, questions that I get asked the most based on my rocket book video. I have my first video from September of 2017, which at this point is over three years ago, on how to put your rocket book on steroids by using some of my favorite bullet journal style tips. And that one has a bunch of productivity tips as well as how I use my rocket book in a slightly different way. So check out that video and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more on organizing, productivity, rocket book. I have a mix of things and I'm going to keep on posting more and more. You can follow me also on my website, 
SusannaK.com. No matter what, though, keep on being productive, having fun, and I love you. Bye.